How long is this going to take? I remember when I did my first refinance for my first bird property and the mortgage company sent me over the application and I put like 15 minutes on my calendar. Like I had like a lot of stuff to do that day. So I blocked off 15 minutes to fill out the application and it was not a 15 minute process. Like gathering everything that they needed, answering all their questions and gathering all the documents. It took me like two or three hours to gather everything. On this channel, I talk a lot about the refinance process and the Burr strategy because there's not a lot of information out there and it's probably one of the most nuanced areas of the Burr strategy, right? When we talk about the Burr strategy, we just graze over refinance process and it's like a whole entire process. And I want you to be prepared before you enter into that B of the Burr. I want you to know what you're getting into when you actually go to refinance your property. And so we're going to go through all the documents needed for the Burr property process, the refinance process of the Burr strategy. And you are going to love me for this because you're not going to be blindsided like me. So before we get into this, I want you to go down below in the description. I actually have a list of all the documents that we're going to need. So I want you to watch this because I'm going to explain a lot about these documents and what is needed within these documents that you're going to need to know. But when it's time for you to actually refinance, I want you to download this list. I want you to have it so that you can go and check, 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 send everything to your mortgage company before they even ask so that they, there's not a lot of back and forth so download it below and then also below i also have a actual refi checklist so outside of the actual application process which is what we're talking about today there are some other things around the refinance process that will help you to make this process go smoothly but also get more money when you go to actually refi and last but not least, subscribe to this channel because I have hundreds of videos for you, specifically real estate videos for you. Yes, you. So subscribe to this channel and we are going to get right into these documents. So the first document that you're going to need is your LLC docs, the document that you got when you filed your LLC with the state. The lender is actually going to need that. So have that ready. So the second document you're going to need is your EIN document. The document you got from the IRS when you filed to get your EIN. Super simple, straightforward, your EIN document. Okay, so the third document you're going to need is your operating agreement. You're going to need this operating agreement even if you are single member LLC. You're just going to need a single member LLC operating agreement. You're specifically going to need it if you're a partnership. Your lender wants to see how your LLC operates. They want to see who is actually on the actual LLC. So you're going to need to provide an operating agreement, whether you have partners or not. The next document is going to be your subsistence certificate or your certificate of good standing. This is going to be a document that you get from your state department that basically says that your LLC is in good standing. Yes, your mortgage company wants to see this. They want to make sure there's no liens on your LLC from a state level. And they just want to make sure that you're actually paying taxes and that your LLC is actually in good standing. And unfortunately, this document costs, it could cost in your state. For me, I invest in Pennsylvania and it's $40. State wants their $40. You really need to check with your state to find out how long it takes for them to turn it around and make sure that you prepare like if it's going to take a week you prepare to have that document turned around so that you can keep your refi going on just keep it going right you don't want it held up because you're waiting to file this document that then takes another week and so you want to be prepared for that so you're going to need a certificate of good standing or a subsistence certificate Okay, the fifth document that you're going to need to provide is your actual leases, right? Your mortgage company wants to make sure that you have the place occupied and leases are signed. So just get the lease that you filled out with the tenant, with them signed, having signed the document and provide that to your lender. Okay, so the next document is the actual application. You're going to get this document from the mortgage company 
they're going to give you an application to fill out. This application can be really short, a one pager, or it can be very lengthy where they ask you a lot of questions about yourself, your finances, and your property. Don't worry. You can do this. <laughs> if it's a long application, it's just nothing you can do, but just fill it out. If you want to do business with this particular mortgage company, um, sometimes they can ask you some really wackadoo questions and it just is what it is. You're going to actually have to fill out this document, the application. <sighs> this document, <laughs> this next document, the personal financial statement is a pain in the entire butt. Not all mortgage companies request it, but... A lot of them do. They are going to provide you with a document where you are going to make some declarations about your personal finances. They really want to know your net worth and your experience in investing. And they just want to know as much about you as possible. And so they're going to ask you a numbers of values of properties that you own, values of stock that you own, life insurance policies, um, 401ks, all that. They really do want to know. And so just fill it out to the best of your abilities. I always round to the nearest thousand. Like you don't need to go and pull these documents down and find out to the penny how much you owe and the mortgage, all, all that stuff. Like you don't need to do that. Just fill it out to the best of your abilities without making yourself go absolutely insane and just fill it out. It is what it is. Again, not all mortgage companies ask for this, but I do want you to be prepared if they do ask you for it. And to be honest with you, I've never, if you are afraid that you have a very low net worth, I've never seen a mortgage application turned down because they didn't like the person's personal financial statement, right? Like, don't worry about that. Just fill it out to the best of your ability. As long as the property straight, your credit straight, you know, some basic stuff, just fill it out and give the people the information that they want. Whatever you feel comfortable with filling out. Okay, the next document is the scope of work. Some mortgage companies want to know what you actually did to the property when you rehabbed it. So you can send over your scope of work or your list of repairs if they request it. If you really put your foot in this property, make sure you put line items, the the put each line item and next to it, put the actual dollar amount spent on it just so you can just like boss up on them. Like, listen, this is a $12,000 HVAC system in here and it's fancy. It's, this is kind of like your way of letting them know like this property is well worth it. Now, there's going to be an appraisal that will really dictate everything, but sometimes they want to know it and let's just have it on record that you like did the darn thing to this property just in case they want to look over it because the underwriter is going to be looking through all these documents. So we just don't want to give them any reason to deny you or allow you to allow them to offer you less on the cash out. The next document is going to be a credit card authorization form. Remember, you actually have to get an appraisal and guess who fits the bill for the appraisal? You do. So the lender is going to need a credit card to actually pay for the appraisal. So you need to fill out a credit card authorization form. You can provide your debit card, whatever. I recommend you get some points for it. Put your credit card information in there so that you can pay for the appraisal. The 11th document is going to be your evidence of insurance. So by now you should have gotten out of your builder's risk insurance policy and now into a landlord policy, right? You've done rehabbing this property, so you don't need builder's risk anymore, right? But now you have a tenant in there, so you need landlord policy. And your mortgage company is going to make sure, they want to make sure that you actually have insurance, the proper insurance on this property. At some point in a later date, once you get closer to closing, they're going to be needed to add, they're going to be, they're going to be needed to be added as, um, and insured on the actual policy but we don't have to worry about that right now all they want to do is actually see the document so you're going to need to provide evidence of insurance all right so the next document is actually a picture of your id they're going to see a picture of your state issue id front and back 
because they want to make sure that you are who you are and they want all the documents on you. They want to make sure that they got everything. So just take a picture of your ID front and back and send it right over to them. Okay, one more, here's a bonus. Now, it's not actually a document, but again, this is all about preventing you from being blindsided. Your mortgage company may run a background check on you. You might not even know it. They're not gonna ask you for your permission to run the background check. Now, if you have some things in your past, maybe this is a question that you wanna ask your mortgage company beforehand. Hey, do you guys run a background check? If you do have things in your past, that does not necessarily mean no. You just need to be able to explain it away. They probably just wanna make sure that you don't have any mortgage fraud on your criminal record right? Specifically mortgage fraud. And they just really want to get to know who they're doing business with. If you have anything on your back that does not mean no, please do not get scared. It doesn't mean no. They just want to make sure you haven't done like mortgage fraud like three months ago, right? Like that's important. They don't want to do business with someone who just is on trial right now for mortgage fraud, right? So don't get scared. Just ask them beforehand and just make sure you can explain it away. Okay, so the last document is going to be your tax returns. Now, not all mortgage companies will require your tax returns, but in case they do, I don't want you to be blindsided by it. They may need one or two years of your tax returns. If you are not in a position to provide these documents, you don't want to provide these documents, you don't have these documents, you can ask the lender in the beginning, like, hey, what type of documents do you require for a refi? Do you need tax returns. If you don't want to provide them and they say no, go ahead, move forward. If they say yes and you don't want to provide them, move on to the next lender. What I don't want you to do is be blindsided and I want you to have all these documents ready, locked and loaded when it's time to go. So to answer the original question, which was, how long is this going to take? Forever. Make it 